square one again. Okay, so we took a bit of a break over the Christmas holidays. Um, I got fed up with um, everything, really. Um, <coughs> I was putting one of the water tanks and sliced my finger open, so I took some time off so I didn't get that infected or or damaged further. Um, no, so I just wanted some family time because I've been spending every single weekend and spare time that I've got in the bus and I just wasn't giving my kids enough attention so I took some time off to just spend with family uh, which was great. Over that Christmas period we had a lot of rain and realised after the fact when I jumped back in the bus after Christmas to have a look that it had leaked in several places throughout our bus um, and the floor that I had cut four or five months ago was all water damaged, um, starting to swell in a couple of areas. Um, it, it just wasn't great. Um, I also didn't take enough time to recut, uh, sorry, to cut the flooring originally. So there were some parts that were too high, some parts that weren't cut properly. Um, some really bad design flaws because I started from the back and worked my way forward rather than starting from the front and working my way backwards or planning it out first and just it was a mess. Um, plus I used 17 mil ply for the whole thing so around the wheel wells where there's a 5 mil raise I didn't take that into account so it was always higher and it rocked every time you walked over it. Um, it, it wasn't good. The seals that we got for our windows, um, they they were defective. They no no fault on the supplier. Um, they started leaking from the very first day after I installed them. Um, they were it was literally raining the next day and it started leaking in throughout the the bus. So even um, here on the passenger side, I've had to lift up the pinch weld here and down in the little quarter panel um, because when they're actually closed they fill with water and the water just spills over whereas when they're not closed it gives it enough time to drain out before it comes in um, so yeah I, I need to get that stuff fixed up um, they end up replacing the seals because they did deem them defective they've been sitting here for months and I've been pondering over when I was going to do it because Every time I do it, it takes at least a full day to take out all the windows, clean them all up, remove all the glass, redo the seals, put the glass back in, test it all, line it all up perfect, put them in, and it's it's a whole day's job um, with help. Um, so I decided to return those seals. Um, I then went and spent double that price to go and get genuine seals to avoid the fact of having to cut them and make sure everything's lined up right and things like that. So the genuine seals are pre-molded from Toyota. Um, there's no cutting involved. All the drainage holes are cut. All the um, like lock brackets are cut. Everything's already done. Um, so all I have to do is line up the cuts, push them in, and should be all sweet. So I should be able to get that done a lot sooner than So I've got those sitting here ready to go. I also realized that the vent above me, so where this opening is behind that, there's there's vents that sit along there that allow intake for the aircon unit that used to be here. Um, that is also leaking. Um, I realized that when we had water in the cab, after the first one, I realized that there were water marks that were running down there and dripping from the top. Um, and when I went out to the vent and had a look, when you pull them back, because they're, they're clipped in, when you pull it back, the entire inside is just covered in rust. It's cracked in a couple of spots. Um, so it's, it's definitely leaking in there. And from reading a lot of stuff online, it looks like the seals underneath that deteriorate pretty 
pretty easily and a lot of people have um, spots leaking in there. So I got new ones of those to replace them. Um, and because it's been leaking in the front and it was left for so long, um, all in the foot wells are now covered in rust. Um, so I'm also rust proofing those. So uh, the next few videos are gonna seem repetitive. Um, I'm essentially doing everything again um, yeah, I, I don't even know if there's one video that I've done so far that I won't need to redo yet, um, apart from pulling the seats out, which was like the first video, and ripping down the, the insulation and all that stuff. But pretty much from the start, where I actually started doing stuff on the bus, I essentially need to do all over again. Um, so I've bought new flooring. We started cutting them yesterday. I didn't get video of it, I'm sorry, I just, I didn't even think about it until we were almost done, essentially. We did the 17mm on the form ply and then we got 12mm normal ply, but because it's over the metal plate, I'm not too worried about that getting water damaged once I seal the roof, um, which I'll be doing the entire roof in thermo shield plus sealing the seams in between, I'll be taking out the back tail lights and sealing around those because they're leaking as well. Um, I've got new vents to replace the ones above me that are leaking, so that'll fix that leak as well. And the window seals are getting redone, so that'll fix those leaks as well. So once all that's done, there's no other places that I've found so far that are leaking. So that should make it perfect. Um, for the parts that I've cut in the form ply, it is normal ply underneath because once you cut into the wood, the protective coating they've put around the edges is exposed, so you then have to seal it. I looked for several things that I can do to seal it, and I was suggested to use epoxy. Um, epoxy, I've never really been um, comfortable using. It sets very quickly, it's very messy, um, it's, it's just a pain to work with. So. Then I looked at using like a varnish or a polyurethane coating to seal the edges, but then reading on that, I then have to make sure that it's maintained and it has to be resealed frequently, which once it's in the bust and the flooring's on top, I'm never going to touch it again, so it needed to be a permanent solution to seal. Um, so when I was speaking to the people in the paint shop at Bunnings, they suggested using a fiberglass resin so I've got the resin and I've got the hardener and once I've finished the entire flooring I'll be using that to seal all the edges that could potentially be exposed to water um, and all the parts just to make the form ply waterproof again. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of spots that need to be touched up. Um, Katie's helping me redo the flooring um, because not that I'm not confident cutting the wood, because I'm confident cutting the wood, but because I'd already wasted three, four hundred dollars previously doing the flooring, and this flooring is more expensive, if I screw it up again, anyway. So if she helps me double check the measurements, helps me mark up the measurements, then all I have to do is cut it. Um, we're overestimating a little bit, because if I cut it down and it still doesn't fit, I can always sand it back, but if I undercut, there's no way of adding more wood once it's cut. So we're taking our time to do that. Um, I've already got three panels down, which already looks and feels much better than the previous wood that I had, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, Katie's currently getting the kids down to sleep before she helps me do the last few panels. Um, so at the moment I'm just tapping the rust in the driver's side first, because that was bad. I'll be respraying the entire interior. Um, it's filthy, it's scratched, it's rusting, it needs to be redone. Um, so I've got more rust primer that I'm going to be doing the entire interior with again. I'll just be spraying the whole lot once I take the windows out. Um, I've also didn't realise before, but the primer shouldn't be left by itself. So I'm also going to be sealing over the top of that with a rust guard top coat as well. Um, so that'll cover that, seal it all, should make it a bit stronger. And yeah, 
I'll also be doing that entire stuff to the front as well, plus the roof above me. Um, and I'll be coating that with primer and with top coat. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff that I need to get done. So I'm sorry if the next few videos seem repetitive. They will be repetitive. A lot of the stuff's going to be the same. So, yeah, the form ply that we've got down. So far, we've got three panels here. So this section here is one full panel with just a notch cut out here. And I had about uh, 40 mil or so in the corner here, which wouldn't fit in the one panel. So we had to start the next panel here. That was just a little notch out there. And I think we took off, I think 460 mil here to have another panel that wasn't just a small sliver. Then we took off more here to get it up to where the ridge starts here. So moving up to this ridge here where it starts, then we're gonna have the 12 mil ply over the top here. We're gonna have some type of um, like a spacer here to raise that up the five mil to where it goes in here. This part's gonna be left open, but the wood's gonna cover here. So we're gonna do two panels, one around this wheel well splitting down the middle here. And then we have another one meeting on the other side to do the other side over here. We're then gonna have another piece of form ply that's going to start here where this ridge is and goes to the back. So we've got three more pieces we need to mark out and cut. Thanks for sticking with us so far. Um, thank you for continuing to watch and your continued support. Um, we're more than happy to answer any questions that you've got. We, or oh, me in particular, I'm a complete amateur when it comes to building a bus or any type of trade. So I'm doing this all with essentially zero experience. Um, so I'm learning as I go. If you have any questions or want any help at all, or know what products we've used or whatnot, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, I'm more than happy to supply links of where we got stuff. Most of this stuff is gonna be from Bunnings. Um, a couple of things we might be getting from places like Amazon or eBay if we can't source it locally for a decent price. Um, but yeah. We have done one more panel in the back here. Uh, we've got to do the other side, but it just started to rain, so while it's sprinkling and whatnot, we don't want to get the unprotected ply wet. In the meantime, Katie's making lunch. So yeah, I'll set you guys up and we'll get started. Okay, so at the moment, this is the second set of flooring that we've done. Um, this was what took us so long to carve around Yesterday was all of that stuff and to try and get it into the corner and, and all that stuff. I raided my son's chalk collection. And around here, let's go all along the ridge. Again, and then we'll stop, stop, stop. And then lift it up. Voila. You probably could do it very easily with different types of chalk, with um, some type of gel pen or paint or anything really, um, just to get that outline. But yeah, just thought it was a really interesting tip. If it helps you guys, great. If not, you learn something new, I guess. But yeah. I'm gonna get to work marking it out properly and cutting it out and yeah, besides that, all we've got left to do is this panel. 
and then the floor's done. Hey guys, okay, so Katie's outside sanding down the little cover for the fuel sender in the back piece of wood. Um, while she's working on that, I'm going to start dismantling the dash again. Um, I put it in there just because I needed to figure out if the dash is, I'm sorry, if the um, ga uh, gauges and all that stuff are working and still having issues. So, anyway, it's only held in by about nine screws, so I'm going to undo those, um, get the dash out so we can get it ready for sand, uh, get the front cab area ready for rust proofing and sand editing. So yeah, I'm gonna work on that now. You say hello. Like this. Like this. Mwah. You like this. So that piece that she's cutting out now is going to be a little insert for that fuel sender hole. Um, we've decided we're going to use hardwood rather than use the metal plate um, and we're going to put a flush ring mount in it so we can still stack stuff on top of it in the in the back area and keep it uniform and, and all that stuff. So we're about to test fit and make sure it fits in there properly.